Hey, what's up? It's good seeing you again. It's been a minute, huh? I am working on finishing up the next building pack. I released the one maybe like a couple months ago now. It was free. It was like a very basic pack with like five or six buildings in it. And they were all pretty, typically, pretty relatively low poly. They were just done super quick. So I did them for myself, for a project, for the Akira stuff. And then I just put them out there and let people have them. But since then, I've kind of gone back to it. So take a look. Here's what it looks like now. And basically, you can kind of see there's a little bit of, there's a couple of new buildings here, and then maybe some differences to the original ones. So the original ones, I've gone through, cleaned up a lot of the topology, cleaned up some of the textures, just overall tightened everything up. And then I also added uh, a couple more details, like some of these vents here from my city adverts and vents pack that I also released for free. You can download that. I'll have a link for everything in the description. Uh, that's also free. And then, so I added some of that on here just to give the buildings a bit more detail. I added these like, you know, infamous little red lights on the corners because over the course of working on these buildings and making and renders and things like that, I've noticed that those really add a lot. Those really just make the buildings pop as buildings. And I don't know, it's like scale. It's It's a bunch of little things that just kind of scratches the brain in the right place. Um, and then I also added like additional little details like jump outs and bump outs and things like that. So it does make these ver this version a little bit like not as low poly as the original version. Um, it's a little bit higher poly, but what I'm also gonna be releasing is besides just these static ones, there's these editable ones. And the editable ones are a little bit different. I mean, I mean, they look exactly the same and everything, but the only thing is that everything is a little bit more live. So because this is Blender and if you open up, if you open it up as a blend file, you'll have the ability to like, you know, increase the amount of floors with the array modifier. So essentially all you get is like a single level and then you can add the array modifier to it, which is what I've done with all of these. Uh, this building right here in the middle specifically is three parts. So it's like 10 levels of array. So you can kind of get the idea there. And then I just thought this one, this was the easiest way for me to array all of them. But also what it gives you is like three, you know, uh, different chunks of building to play with and to stack and kind of move around. This roof is also separated. So there's that. Um, and then these two new buildings are my attempts at skyscrapers and if you want to see me like give a tutorial on how i made this it, i think i figured out a pretty fun and pretty fast way to create these that i'm kind of looking forward to trying different shapes on and things like that um but the idea is that this one is like a finished skyscraper and this one's again editable and by that it means um this actually Oh, this is missing an array modifier. I guess it's already been applied. Whoopsie, I might have to do something about that. But this one is like the wireframe. So it's the, I'll make sure to fix that before I release it. But you can see it's like, you know, without the window frame and then with the window frame, that's really what that is. And again, it's an array modifier. So it goes up 60 floors. And then this one um, here, yeah, it works. So you can see like, the amount of levels for the window glass and then the frame is the same thing and everything is kind of parented into itself so the frame is here and then there's this like this is this is like a skyscraper under construction so it's uh it's like a bunch of these exposed metal floors that i just like really simply put together i think from a distance this would look really good um but up close you know it's it's okay it's passable there's this mesh net that's all the way around the building kind of like whatever, keeping debris from falling in and out of the building, things like that. Um, and then just this little top exposed unfinished section. Actually, let me fix this real quick. This texture looks weird. There we go. Um, but yeah, so that's that. But as I kind of wrap this project up and get it ready for release, I want to try making... Um, I want to have it ready for the asset browser and, and they're all marked as assets as you can see here. But I do want to create individual thumbnails. Like just want to kind of show you my process for creating thumbnails. I have some here for an example. 
um, of some previous assets that I've made. I, some of these are released over Patreon. Some of these are on Gumroad. And I think these are, I think, yeah, most of these are probably either on Gumroad or on Patreon or between the two. Uh, and then I have like other stuff that's kind of over time I've worked on and created. And, and you can see like the previous building pack doesn't really have, you know, it's, it's asset browser ready, but it doesn't have custom uh, thumbnails. But this second one, um, I just wanted to try making custom thumbnails. So let's just do that. Okay. So I'm going to need a camera and I have a camera here. Let me turn on screencast keys real quick so you can see everything. All right, cool. So usually the thumbnails are square and I don't think they need to be super high res. So we'll do 1080 by 1080, maybe even like 50%. And so we'll, we'll just like set the camera up, I think at an angle that works. For the previous assets, I think I had like an orthographic camera, which is if you go in the perspective here, there's perspective and then you go orthographic and that gives you like this, I don't know, no, like a three quarters view. And this can be good for like individual single assets if you wanna get the same consistent look. But for me, for this, because the buildings are taller and vertical, I don't think, the square format's gonna work. I mean, I feel like this would work, but when we see it in, like, uh, if we see it as an asset, it would probably look really small. So it would probably be like this big and it would just be tiny. So I'm thinking maybe just doing like the tops of the buildings or just doing like a close up of them somehow in a way that gives me a lot of information with it being um, like a thumbnail preview. So maybe something like this. Like, you know, just enough for me and for, I guess, everyone else to get an idea of what kind of building it is. And usually the tops of these buildings is what is the most distinct because the base is just the same. And, you know, this could make a cool thumbnail, I guess, but I think it's just not telling me enough. So having maybe something like this. Um, and I like to also look at other asset packs and how they handle it. So there's this asset pack from big, medium, small. And they have like full renders on a white background with shading and you know shadows and stuff. And I think these assets are huge and they're really this really shows a lot, but I can't make them any bigger, so I can't really see, you know, I don't know. It's like maybe personal preference. Like I think this is really good in general, just having everything right in the middle of the frame and every nothing is being cut off, that's good. But for my own assets and also knowing that these are all generally the same. I think I can get it like this part looks the same as the part underneath of it. So there's no need in kind of including the whole entire thing in frame. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So I think maybe we'll try this. We'll try this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off all of these background ones and turn off this one here. And I don't know, I feel like, ooh, I kind of like that. Being able to go like that. Let's go back into the camera, pull it back just a bit. Maybe three quarter view. No, I think I can see just enough like this. Yeah. This is so trippy. Okay. Let's just stick with something. Let's go like, and make sure nothing is cut off awkwardly. Let's go with that. Okay. And I'll turn off the rest of the buildings just so that they're not creating weird shadows. And we'll see what it looks like with the, okay. And I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna do no background because I kind of like the default ones, how they're just individual like that. And then also in my other ones, like there's no background, it's PNG. And then that also makes it more compatible with like different types of blender themes and all this kind of stuff that people might have set up custom. So I think it'll work with that. All right, I think the lighting is pretty good. It's not too, um, it's not too, whoa. That's one of the things is like, you kind of want to have even lighting and especially it just really depends on what 
who the thumbnail is for. Is it for you and whatever makes it easiest for you to identify exactly what it is? Because that's really the point to make it easily identifiable. So I think maybe just having it fully lit from the front kind of might be the way. And this really might not be the time to like get dramatic with it and get like just, you know, lighting that makes it confusing. So I think I'll keep that. And then let's see, let's go to film, transparent. So turn the background off. I think that's good. Okay. So we don't have to render it super high on the samples. I think that's good enough. Because again, it's going to be like this big. You know, even smaller maybe. Just going to tighten it up just a bit more. Okay, let's try that. So I hit F12 to render. Looks good. Go to image, save as, and then pick like a folder. I have a folder here in the, um, in the asset pack folder on the, my computer. I'll just make it thumbnails. Oh. What's this one called? I think blue corners. So now that we have that saved, we go into our asset library here and blue corners, hit the N button to get the end panel up. And then here we go to preview, thumbnails, blue corners, go to preview. And then there you go. So I do think it's a little bit like yellow. So I might maybe try a different HDRI. Let me try that real quick. that let's render that one out okay so because it's like 50% of 1080 it's like super super quick and it's not a lot of samples which makes it really easy to render and then we'll save that out go here swap it out I wonder if just refreshing it will do it yeah so if we save over it refreshing it seems to do it so now that we have the camera set up here and we have our buildings um, I think what we can do is since they're all on the same axis here, so if we kind of go into this other view, yeah, we can kind of see that there's our, where's our camera? There's our camera right here. And then it's just looking at the buildings in the same spot. So what we can do is we just grab our and drag it over on the X until it gets in the frame like that. And this one might might scale down just to fit. And they're all lined up, so it kind of makes it like all I got to do is slide it over into the shot and then get it to fit. So this one I'll leave like that. Okay. Let's render it. Okay, that was quick. Save as. I think it was called Skyscraper. We'll just call it two for now. And here's that one. Load it up. And there it goes. Looks good. Okay. I'm going to see if I can control Z my way out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Get the frame in there. Move it over like that. Scale it down a bit. I am going to make this one a little bit smaller. All right. Hit F12. Renders. And this is pretty much the process for all of them. So I'm just going to speed right through that real quick.
All right, cool. And that's it. So that looks to be done there. I'm going to have to like reposition all these back to where they belong. But yeah, we have nice little um yeah, buildings now. So if we want to like drag them in, you'll know exactly what they look like. They are scaled down a bit, so that that's why they're coming in bigger. But yeah. Cool. And I think that looks good large, and then it looks good tiny. Even tiny, you can tell exactly what everything is. So I'm probably going to do that for the old pack and then just kind of maybe update the file on Gumroad and everything like that. The old one will you know, still be free and everything like that on Gumroad. The new one, probably going to release it on my Patreon first. That's usually kind of how I do things. And if you want to get them right away, you can get them there. Um, but, you know, other than that, they'll probably end up on Gumroad eventually or something like that. So thank you for watching and we are just wanted to say thank you for just all the support and the views and the subscribers and everything. And yeah, got more videos coming and uh, I'll see you then. See ya.